I don't think so. So, so the union, the Texas Union, which is like the the place in college where um, it's like where everyone goes and eats. You know, like there's an outdoor area, and you go get your Wendy's or your Taco Bell, whatever. You go out on the uh, the patio and you eat out there. And these pigeons will just straight up land on your table and eat food out of your hand. Like they they are fearless, right? So my friend and I were thinking, like, what can we do that would be sort of like our our sort of thing? And we came up with the idea of we were going to start, we were going to go at night and start feeding these pigeons on the tables until they know at night people show up and feed them and they'd come on the tables and land and stuff. Then we were going to capture a few of them and then we were going to make little capes and helmets out of, out of <laughs> ping pong balls and then put them on the pigeons and just release them back into the wild. Because I, to me personally, if I was sitting there eating my, my lunch and a pigeon with a helmet landed on my table, that'd be it. Nothing else would be funnier in the world. That's like, incredible. Like, you would never benefit from the joke. No, but I mean, the idea, just like the idea that there are pigeons flying around yeah. with capes and helmets on. Like, I'd love just to that, see that. Yeah, exactly. Pigeons. Just like that, that mental image of a pigeon landing with like a motorcycle helmet on. Like, what the fuck is this? And then it just flies away and it's like, so. You think that Did would you? like help the pigeon? Like would it have some kind of like evolutionary <laughs> advantage? Like. It's immune to head trauma uh, now. But so is this something you did or you wanted no, to No, we thought about it. Then we couldn't figure out any way to secure it to a pigeon without actually hurting it or harming it. So it's like, if someone can figure out a way where you can put Super a glue. helmet. <laughs> yeah. You can put it on a, yeah. on a pigeon without hurting it. Super glue. Can't glue a pigeon. It won't hurt until you try to take it off. Its feathers will come out. If it's protected, it's better off with a helmet on. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Think true. about it. If you're riding a motorcycle, would you rather have feathers on your head or a helmet? But the idea of like, try, try, I think the try. best way is to start it young. Like, throw a catch with it in the front yard for a while and get it interested in the sport. <laughs> and then eventually, it looks just want that. Buy a little motorcycle and you have to get it a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, we've got to protect you now. So, anyway, we ended up, we ended up not doing it, but, yeah. Uh, he, this was a guy who, uh, I think he bought like 20,000 goldfish and put them in a pond at his high school. Wow. So, like, it was just one of those things you can't just drain the pond and kill 20,000 goldfish. Well, you also so, can't put 20,000 goldfish in a pond. You can buy goldfish. A lot of them will die, like, just going into the yeah, pond. Yeah, you can, you can buy goldfish for, like, a penny. So he spent, really? like, he spent like $200 and just, like, just got a loaded goldfish, dumped him in, like, put him in a truck, dumped him in the pond, and drove off. So I, we I, almost I, did that, actually. You can buy him in bulk and leave you go to, like, Sam's Club or something. I don't know. I don't know where you get him in bulk, but. I saw my brother kill his goldfish once. <laughs> it, was, it was like Neil and, and in between. <laughs> he just punched, it in the face. punched it in the head. No, he was playing darts, and the dart bounced off like the metal on the dartboard and went straight through no. his goldfish. Yeah. No! <laughs> yeah. There is no way that and is true. And I think true. the blood from the fish killed the other one that was in there. Like what? It, like the, it was just like leaking Or the blood. trauma from like seeing yeah. its, its goldfish friend stab. Yeah. So your brother speared a goldfish with a dart. Unintentionally. Like you couldn't have aimed it, it had to be like perfect deflection into his fishbowl. <laughs> Wait, it seems to me like there's a spot on my back deck where a fucking bird sits and it shits in the same place on my deck, like spot after spot after spot. Like it makes, like when I go out of town for a week or two, it's like a mound of bird crap. Like a stalagmite? In, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in, one, <laughs> in one place. Working his way up. In one fucking place. I'm hoping the bird, if I leave it long enough, it'll shit enough to where the bird will push itself off the branch. <laughs> or it'll, or it'll get, just impale itself. Yeah. It's, it's like this pile of shit that goes straight up into the like dead bird. There's like this skeleton up there. You're like, what is that? Like, well, I've got a story for you. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest time lapse in the world. <laughs> The secret is not to chase away the bird, but feed it constantly. Yeah. And feed it really sharp food. <laughs> and it'll, it'll, it'll kill itself. So, <clears throat> when we were in California... Go ahead. I was intending on staying three days. And? I ended up staying f five. Yeah. Because we extended our trip to go on What's Trending. And, I mean, you know this story. I probably told you as well. But I ran out of clothes. And everyone thinks it's mental what I did. Did I tell you about it this? Is what you did fucking is mental fucking what you mental. Did. How is it mental? Explain what you did. Tell, tell, tell. Explain what you did. Yeah, tell the story. Well, I ran out of shirts, I ran out of t-shirts. I, I brought plenty of, of underwear. I washed my clothing at a laundry. Go ahead. Okay, well. Also, there's laundry service at hotels. Yes, I was is. checking out that day. Yes. <laughs> to being adults. There you go. Cheers. I was checking out that day. It was, it was like 10 a.m. and I had to be out by midday. And uh, I had three dirty shirts. And now, nothing, I'd like for Gavin to pause for a moment. I'd like to ask our audience to consider this. You're in a hotel. You're out of clothing because all your clothes are dirty. You're checking out later that morning. What do you do? What Gavin, do please you do? What would Gavin do? There should be our new series. What, Pop quiz, hot what shot. would you do if you're a rational human being? Now let's find out what Gavin did. Well, I also needed a shower. So what I did, I put on all three shirts and took a shower in them. I, I got all the shampoo, put it all on me, rubbed it all over the shirt, like got it all up, all the layers of shirts, all up like this. And then I rinsed it all off and I dried them. 
That isn't How that did you mental. dry them? With a hairdryer. <laughs> Gavin, that is what an insane person you, would you, do. Why didn't you just wash them in the sink? There you go. Hey, why not do that, Gavin? I needed a shower as also, well. Also, I like oh, how I your excuse is you were checking out shortly. You knew you were going to run out earlier in this trip. I didn't. I was told, hey, we're staying till this day now. I was like, oh, all right. And how many days was that? Like ahead of time, did you know that? I probably found out the evening before, but I was drunk. Ah. Uh. So Gavin, yeah, let me ask you a question. And it worked out fine, and I went on the show, and my shirt smelled like shampoo. It was good. It smelled clean, and- What kind of shampoo? I would also argue that you didn't, take, you didn't take a shower, because you had clothes on, so you did not, you didn't clean yourself. Did you take the clothes off and then continue your shower? No. You got out sopping wet with three <laughs> shirts on, peeled them off, and then dried them. Tell me you at least took the shirts off in the tub of the shower before getting out. That way you didn't just drain water all over your hotel bathroom. I'm just happy you didn't oh, show no, up. it was wet floor, for sure, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't show up to the set of the show, like, in three <laughs> wet shirts. <laughs> I weighing a genius. thousand pounds. I can, I can imagine Gavin, like, stepping in with his shoes on, too. Be like, oh, I've worked for the shirt. Also, I mean, might as well. the best way to dry a shirt quickly, you, uh, you, tie the, you tie a knot in the sleeves and blast a hairdryer up. The whole thing inflates and you see the steam coming off. Or use a clothes dryer. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there as Or a just stick it in the sun. Yeah, let me just find some sun in my <laughs> in my hotel room that doesn't face the sun. What is this crazy sun you're talking let me about? Find some sun. Uh. So, Gavin, just so you know, because you don't drive, but when you do start driving, if your car ever gets dirty, do not drive it into a swimming pool. That is not the solution. Do not wear it into the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe one day you're gonna go through, be going through a car wash, and Gavin will be like, "I need a shower too. Let me just roll down all the windows." There you go. <laughs> I These got seats out of the, are dirty. I got out of the shower and I had a smile on my face because I thought. I thought, this is brilliant. That worked. You certainly did think that. Idiots are usually happy. That's what's been my experience. <laughs> like what Barbara did to me in the hotel, the story that she told last week. What'd she do in the hotel? Well, she stole my Do Not Disturb sign. Oh and, uh, my God. <laughs> and I was this taking a dump so with the door open. great. <laughs> it's so great. She told it, right? Yeah, Barbara told a story on the podcast. So what, well, oh. but, uh, but then I, I just feel sorry for the, the maid as well. Cause she, for a start, she knocked. She knocked and opened the door at the same time, nah. which you're not supposed to do. You're meant to knock and wait a while. Do you while. think she likes catching people in the bathroom? That's why she do, she knocks and opens the door not, at the same why time. Why do you not have the thing locked? Did they not have like the thing that like whips you did. over? Yeah, I had to do not disturb sign. I didn't think anyone would come in. You still lock the door or the really... door to the bathroom closed? Yeah, and and like when you <laughs> open the door, the first thing you see is, is the toilet. So wait. I'm there on my phone. She comes flinging in, and I was like mid poo. So you get the thing where like. You tense up so your asshole becomes like a pair of scissors and it severed my, <laughs> severed my dumb. And I dropped my phone as well. And she was like, ooh! And I was like, God <laughs> damn was it. She, was she a Muppet? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like scrambling to pick up my phone and my asshole has gone all closed. And, <laughs> and my heart was racing and I just so unpleasant. I want to get her back somehow. This is the, the maid? No, Barbara. <laughs> I yeah. like, yeah, the, the most, the craziest thing like that for me is the ET ride at Universal Studios Florida has this distinct smell that like every time I walk into that building, and like it's like, I like remember being a child. Plastic and semen? It's, no, it's like, what it's, the it's, <laughs> what's E.T.? Wow. What you want? Jesus Christ. What the fuck is E.T.? <laughs> what the fuck is A bunch of people blowing their loads over little aliens. <laughs> what? He's all cuddly in the fucking phone <laughs> home. He's like, drink. He's cuddly, you wanna, you wanna hug him, you wanna spunk on him. Ellie. <laughs> He wasn't riding a bike over the moon, he was just riding a tidal wave of fear. <laughs> oh, what is, I, think what? Triggered, I think we just triggered a memory in Gus. Something happened to you on the E.T. ride? Jeez, People like E.T. Someone jizzed on the back of Gus's head while he was watching E.T. Uh, no, the E.T. ride, like... So, I watched Breaking Bad at your place. Yes, you did. Congratulations, I, I felt guilty about something. What'd you do? Uh-oh. He cleared his when throat. the first commercial break came up, and you started fast forwarding it, it was fucking silent. And I got really self conscious and I was like, nobody's talking because thought, I'm here. I thought, I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing. And, and I, I like, thought, I'm gonna say something, but I'm not gonna say something because yeah. then Gus will get upset. I literally didn't say anything. <laughs> and it was, like, it was like, this is really awkward. And Esther and I just kind of looked at each other. And we were like, oh my God, I got this a, is my fault. I got a text message in like the first act, and I was like, this is behind me. I'm not going to pull out my phone. I'm going to wait till the commercial break to check my phone. I heard Brandon was like trying to talk to me as the show was about to start, and I'm like, shut up, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> 
You're gonna ruin this it. This is gonna I felt, I felt so out. awful. So I, I guess it was a great experience for you then. Except a bug flew into my fucking face. <laughs> oh, it's always my problem with being outside. There was a like, bug on the that's screen. That's my problem well. with being outside. <laughs> Bugs fly into you. So I'm standing there, I'm sitting there watching the show, and a bug f flew right into my fucking glasses. Well, you had glasses on. Yeah, but what the fuck? Why wasn't it watching the show? <laughs> Bitterball. Bitterballin. Bitterballin. Do it. Do the accent. Uh, Bitterballin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Gavin. Let's go to the barter stoof. <laughs> it's a Bitterballin. That's it. It's the one you're going to do. It sound, like, sound like you're crying. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do the automata. Well, we are losing our Danish viewers as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> just going down. Oh. Danish or Dutch, oh. dipshit. It's you yesterday. said Danish. No, I said. Well, who's, why did you say Danish? You did. He said that he, show. He was, he was talking about Danish. Show show that was Danish. Oh. He was talking about Larry David. He went to Larry David. When we got back from Amsterdam, that was the only way I would talk to Gavin for like a month. Even on game, yeah, it would be. I don't care. Want to go to Amsterdam? Go to Maastricht. <laughs> I really, of all the places we've traveled, I would love to go back there again. Uh, we always had a great time Coffee. after. Coffee. I can't go to the red light. So it's called we, we sat in this one bar called Cafe Bardestoof, which is the bar of stuff. <laughs> you know what that means? Bar <laughs> <laughs> I translated what it meant, real letdown. Well, it's it? in the Stoof district. It's, <laughs> it really is. No, what are you talking about? It was. It was on, it's at the corner of Bar and Stoof. <laughs> well, what does it mean? Do you know what Stoof means? No. Stove. <laughs> it was like stove bar or something. Nah, like, did, did we ever talk about the quietest room in the world? Did we ever talk about that? The one yeah, that sends people so, yeah. crazy. Was it yeah. your backyard yeah, where you can hear the blood? Gus, <laughs> yeah, Gus watches Breaking Bad. Put an Bad. episode of Breaking Bad and Gus in the room. It turns like <laughs> insane inducing quiet. Yeah, it's a normal beat. room. All it has is Gus and AMC on a loop. <laughs> and then what was driving me crazy also is you were fast forwarding the commercials at one speed instead of two speed. I was like, this is taking even longer. Like, this is extending the awkwardness. <laughs> one speed. Isn't that, that playing with you? It's like double speed instead of it's triple speed. It's like the speed, one fast forward out, yeah. like, arrow. He had the one arrow. And I was like, please, that's fast forward That's how he, like, hold over anxiety from last week, because I was fast forwarding. And we oh, went, you just yeah, we we went into the episode. And like, stop, 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 stop. And you're like, I can't. And he won't stop. And Gavin's like, Gavin stood up. He's like, come on. I thought Gavin was going to walk out. I can't deal with this. You know when you're in a... The last three nights, I've gone back into the same dream, and it's awesome. Which dream is it? That's pretty cool. The, yeah. the first day, I was in a, I could tell it was a dream because I was in a bookshop. That would never happen. And uh, I saw Courtney Cox. I was like, Jesus, that's bloody Courtney Cox. Yeah, the book part wouldn't happen, but Courtney Cox. Yeah, it every, might. Every that day. could actually happen. And uh, I made eye contact. I was like, oh, man, maybe I should say something. And I don't remember what happened, but the second night, we actually started talking. And the third night, it was going, it was going well. So I think tonight might be the night. You going to seal I the think, deal? I think I'm going to bang Courtney Cox tonight. Good for <laughs> you. Dream. But I'm amazed I'm, a, I'm able to get back into the moment in the same exact moment in the dream. Have you ever had that? Maybe I, I've had it where I fall asleep to go back into a dream that was so awesome, yeah. and it's worked where I was yeah, able to yeah. go back into a dream. I've that's... done that, but never like consecutive nights. Yeah. I actually had day three of Courtney Cox on the plane this morning. I flew back from Oregon this morning. How'd it work? I, Maybe tonight she's going to Do you think it, so. she's dreaming about you? I hope At so. At the same time, it's this like, is weird this is British weird kid. British kid I keep dreaming about. We're in a bookstore. But it's weird because it's not current. It's like season one of Friends, Courtney Cox, when she was all young. Are you gonna it's know? not Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox. Okay. <laughs> no, you just blew it. You, see, you had an opportunity. Now you're going to be all, she's going to be mad at you in your dream. But it's you said actually really she... fun to try and pick someone up in a dream because you can be, I'm, I'm not sure whether I know it's a dream, but I'm just like a bit more adventurous. It's been fun trying to bang Courtney Cox. It's been a lot of, a lot of fun. I was doing pretty much a slam dunk. I mean, no offense, but if it's my dream, it's pretty much a done deal <laughs> yeah. on the first yeah. night. It's yeah, still yeah. Like you have to try to pick someone up in a dream. Yeah, this is the... Yeah, I'm so bad at talking to him. It takes three yeah. nights. Here's how, my, here's how my dreams work. Hey, I met Michelle Obama. What a slut. <laughs> That's how that works out. <laughs> so, there's no third date on a plane at a bookstore. Like that. We're going to go to the park tonight. <laughs> You go back to her apartment <laughs> for some coffee. They're gonna have their first kiss. I met I met Michelle Obama, and long story short, I live in France now. <laughs> I had to leave the country. That's the that Roman Polanski are roommates. <laughs> <laughs> Roman Polanski, don't let me in with that dude. Come on. <laughs> Fucking fugitive from the U.S. <laughs> yeah, from benefit. Hey, this is great. Now tonight I'm gonna end up banging Roman Polanski. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get banged by Roman Polanski. <laughs> how much let me tell you how this works. Gonna, knows who Roman Polanski is.
in England, there, there was always there would always be fights between rival towns. It wasn't like gang stuff. But fights when, between rival towns. Like you had a rival town. No, it was just like the, the next Shelby town Bob. over. <laughs> the next town over. Okay. If there was ever like an event in my town, you know, other towns would come in, and there would like always what? be like, no. I don't know. We like yeah. a fair or something. That's not something. So that like happens. another town would be like, like your fair sucks. We're gonna wreck it, and they just like they would just come, and there would always be fights because people would get drunk. And I once saw yeah, fair envy. <laughs> <laughs> and I once saw two cops holding this drunk dude. I think he'd been punched because he was bleeding. And he was like swaying and they were like, stand up, stand up. They were both like propping him up like this. And I'm, I think it was an act because he was standing there for about five minutes and I was watching him because I was waiting for someone. And uh, he literally just went, shit. And both cops looked, he, sli he like slipped out of his jacket and just hauled us. And they were both like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was running like this, like full speed, like, <laughs> And they were both at like probably like one meter behind him, and they were both running the exact same speed just forever, and they just went off. It was one of the funniest things wow. I ever witnessed. It was just like I was just watching. It. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. I saw it one time at uh, Buttonumathon downtown when it was at the uh, it's a 24-hour movie festival. When I was at the Ritz, um, it was like eight in the morning, and there was a guy running down Sixth Street and a guy, a cop on a bicycle, chasing the guy. He's like, get down, get down, get down. He ran. He jumped off the bike like movie, like like movie style, and tackled the guy. Awesome, dude! From his bike, like a cowboy yeah. taking on a steer. Yeah, that's it awesome. was amazing. Got the bike ground. parked itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet they do that as much as possible because people they know people are well, making fun of them for being bike bicycle. Uh, absolutely. Well, it's also with little helmets. It was stuff. also one of those things. Where there was like thirty people because the movie had just let out during Button Amazon, and it was like the morning, and everyone was like tired. So like, let's get outside, get some fresh air. And I was like, holy shit, that happened right in front of us. So it was all that was kind of cool. Probably. It was a, it was a promotion for that Joseph Gordon been, Levitt but. movie where he's a bike messenger. <laughs> I have to admit, I have to admit that one time I was making a right on red downtown, and I may have made the stop there a little The rolling quicker. stop. Yeah, yeah, a little rolling stop. And a cop on a bike goes, he was there on the other side of the crosswalk, and he goes, he goes, hey, and he points at me and I made eye contact. He goes, he goes, hey, stop, stop, stop. And I just went, <laughs> I just kept going because I was in the car and he was you on a bike. Rebel. You didn't. I did. What I kind of felt like a dick because I'm sure there were other people in the street who were just like, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that guy didn't stop me. I, I, did, I did that once <laughs> to a, a cop on foot. I, feel, I really feel terrible oh, about no. that. I feel terrible about that. What'd you do? I, I did that to a cop who was on foot in Houston. He was yeah. like directing traffic at a light and I didn't yeah. see him. And I went when I wasn't supposed to go. So he was like, he started screaming at me like, you pull over, pull over. I was like, I looked at him, I was like, he doesn't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> what if he took off? <laughs> what if he writes down your information? I just like took off and just like pulled into a parking garage. I was like, the fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he will then like fake calling for backup? Because he's not really going to do things. Do you think he was like, <laughs> <laughs> just to make himself look good in front of everyone? I'm sure everyone else in the intersection was like, can I just go? <laughs> I want to go now. You worked on Hot Fuzz. Yeah. And what is those series of movies called? Cornetto Trilogy. Do you know why I thought it was called the Cornetto Trilogy? Because they were, for, they were all filmed in Cornetto, UK. That's literally what I thought until I went to see this movie. Really? And they go, oh, I wonder when he's going to eat a Cornetto. And I go, what? And they said, yeah, the, cor or the Cornetto because it's the Cornetto Trilogy. I go, what does that have to do with eating anything? They said, because the ice cream in it's called Cornetto. That seems way dumber to me. They named the entire trilogy after... Well, that's just because they made the same joke twice. Yeah. In the first, like, and they, they figure we'll do it a third one of the, time. One of the just the funny jokes from Shaun of the Dead is that he goes, "Do you want anything from the shop?" And he just goes, "Cornetto," because it's just such a throwaway thing, but people loved it because yeah, it's, so awesome. it's only a UK thing. Like, uh, I got it. When so you gonna... thought there was a place called Cornetto? <laughs> totally. <laughs> they called it the Cornetto trilogy. I've never heard of this ice cream called the Cornetto. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, I thought they filmed them in some region of the UK called Cornetto. <laughs> Can you imagine if I went over to the UK? <laughs> like, what do you want to do right here? I said, well, I want to visit Cornetto. So much has <laughs> happened. <laughs> so the, the cab driver just drives you to a Cornetto manufacturer. <laughs> for a I'm in a shop eating it. Well, you know what the equivalent of that is called in, the, in America? What? A drumstick. Drumstick is like fully covered though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Cornetto's flat topped. Mm. We have those flat top ones, but we don't eat them because they're fucking terrible. Dude, Cornetto's are awesome. Carrie, back me up. Especially terrible. with the flake. I'm with him. If you eat in the wrong way, it could negatively affect your life. You mean like up your butt? Or bad you, stuff. Oh, okay. But if you poo in the wrong way, you're probably gonna be okay. What do you mean? If people you might not wanna hang out with you, but you know, if you're you probably poo, gonna live. If you poo inwards. Well, or how, I don't know how, how, how you would you poo, poo the wrong way? Poo upwards. You poo upwards. Like if it comes out if, sideways. If you tried to poo upwards, 
or while walking. You know? <laughs> like if you did that, yeah. you would probably you would live a normal You're life, or a you normal get healthy life. Probably you can live till eighty pooing wrong. You yeah. couldn't. You'd yeah. have a messy asshole. Why do you think cavemen <laughs> die all the time? Because of pooping. Yeah, I don't think so. Because they're I don't just walking so. and shitting. But if you ate wrong, and if you ate improperly, you ate nothing but like yeah. hydrogenated vegetable oils all day long, you probably wouldn't live till late. Yeah, that's probably what makes you poop wrong too. But if you didn't, it probably would. If you didn't sleep for a week, you'd probably die as well. Sleeping would, sleeping would be a big thing. I still want to beat that record.